I don't care if you young, old, just coming out, coming back it's about out. The record. If you ain't got that record, it's always about the record. Peace, everyone. Welcome to the Timbo King Live Show. I'm your host, Timbo King. We're here today with special guest entertainment manager from the Gangstar Foundation members, Fat Gary. What up, what up, Hi, what Gary, up? What's How you up, doing, my brother? brother? How's everything, hey, man? Everything great? Yes, sir, yes, Thank sir. you for coming down, man. Oh, man, for you, nothing. It's nothing. For the people that don't know who you is, give them a brief little story about your history. Oh, man. Fat Gary. Fat Gary. Uh, from the Gangstar Foundation. Mm -hmm. From the beginning? Uh, from the very beginning. Okay. Hanging out with Guru Premier. They put me on. R.I.P. Um, the Guru. They gave me an opportunity to learn the business. Okay. Um, I took a hold of it and I ran with it. I started as an intern mm -hmm. at Payday Records. Payday Records, classic. You know, so, you know, back in 95, when Guru was putting out Ill Kid Records, okay. putting out Group Home, putting out Bahamadia, putting out J.Ru, I had an opportunity to come in-house and learn the business. So that was a whole D&D &D movement or it just a gang star? It wasn't D&D. &D. It was all started by... Gangstar's manager at the time, Patrick Moxie. Okay. And he gave me an opportunity Patrick, to Patrick, that's the guy from Payday, right? That's the guy from Payday. Nice. So he had Empire Management. Okay, I remember that's that. That's where he started off. He had everybody at one time. He went from there to starting Payday Records over at um, London Records. Okay. In the Universal Building now. Okay. Well, shit, they done changed and moved to... Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, went from interning with Mr. Dave... Uh, to Mr. Dave D and D. Mr. No, Payday. Okay. He worked Payday. D and D was just a studio. Okay, but and it was all, a guy named Dave there too at D. &D. It was a Dave. It was a Dave. Okay. Dave Lotwin and uh, Doug Grammer had okay. D and D. Now, D and D was more or less the home of Premier in the B room. We all hung out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, if anybody knew us or new premiere, or new guru, they knew what studio they were working out of. But Well, he liked it, that sound in particular? Yeah, well, I think that's what it was. Him and Eddie Sancho had a, a formula that worked. The engineer. The engineer. Yes. So um, that worked, and he loved the sound, and other people liked the sound. So after work, or after interning and running faxes, or, 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 or being that messenger from the office to the studio, Things that we need to get signed ASAP. Messenger would take too long. We would get it done. I worked um, as um, it was Payday Records. Me, Sarah Honda. Uh, You're saying some classic names, man. Uh, shoot, I got I got some classic names that's in there, like you know Shadow, um, uh, 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 Sherwin Miller who's doing college radio. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I started interning there. Okay. Um, this is like 93, 94? This is actually like 95, 96. 95, okay. 93, 94. You're from Brooklyn, right? I'm from Brooklyn. East what New part? York. East, East New York. York. East, East New, New York, York in the building. Um, we had a lot of cats come out of East New York, you know. Mm -hmm. I think we helped. At that time, East New York was on fire. I mean, but even before then, and not to jump I mean, off East the New York subject, is still on fire. We had one of the largest hip-hop groups come out of there. The Fat Boys is from out there. Correct. You know what I mean? Uh, rest in peace, Buff. But um, to jump back to... Guru and the Gangstar. Guru, Gangstar, Payday, me interning. Um, you know, I was a part of classic records like J. Roo's Come Clean, Group mm. Home's album, Living Proof. So you was there when they recorded that album? I was there when we recorded from the studio back to the office. Uh, making sure certain things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, my claim to fame personally is when Guru started doing his jazz matazz and I went on the road with him to promote the album. Okay. And, this is your um, first time out on the road this with, is like with the, fir Guru? the first time I ever went out on the road was Period. with Group Home. Oh, well, Group but Home. the claim to fame was with Guru. Okay. That's where I actually got East Coast, taste. West Coast, the whole... The Europe, whole the whole, the whole joint, international, everything. Nice. Um, so we, it got to the point where um, I was learning the business because I had to be hands on. Payday Records was an indie uh, signed to another 
was signed to London Records, which was under Polygram. So it was Polygram, London, Payday. Yes. Now, London had a bunch of other sub-labels. Moax, a um, couple other dance and stuff. So um, I had the opportunity to be hands-on and learn the business, you know, from a kid off the street learning how to use a fax machine, using a complicated copy machine. You know, and then getting jewels along the way to be told, learn how to read the facts that you're about to send without nobody seeing you read the facts. When you make copies, understand and know what you're copying. Who, was, who was screening you about I this? I can't tell you that because okay, they would okay. be like, yo, you're giving away the secrets. Okay. It's just certain ways you learn because at, at that time, Did I Did you go think, to school for uh, management? Nah, man. It just fell It was a school lap. of hard knocks. Nice, nice. You know what I mean? Um, what, what it was is that rap wasn't for me, um, but there was the business side. And what, being the clerical with, part? Yeah, you know, I, I, had to, I had to learn what it was. You know, I remember one time as an intern at Payday Records, WC in the Mass Circle was signed to Payday Records. That's WC that runs around with Ice Cube. Okay. It's his man. I had to make the clean version. So I had to go to the studio. Gangstar was doing, I want to say... Clean version of what record? Of WC and the Mass Circle's record, first album. Okay. Uh, I want to say it was called Curve Swerving. And um, I realized where I wanted to go in the business because my boss at the time, Patrick Moxie, was like, I was putting my coat on, getting ready to head out. He said, where you going? So I'm going to Gangstar's video shoot. He says, no, you're not. You got to stay here and transcribe this album. I'm like, what? So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And that means to actually sit down and write down word for word and be able to highlight each curse word. So when I went to go get it cleaned, I could read word for word and had to blurt out each and every curse word. And back then, they're from L.A., so back then, you know, every line so had a curse So you were traveling from L.A., New York? Nope, I was right there in New York. Okay. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't travel a lot until I got with Guru mm -hmm. and him taking me out on the road with him. So the death of Guru, when he passed away, I mean, it shocked the whole entire hip-hop culture. Yeah. You know, I mean, what happened when he passed away what happened to the Gangstar Foundation? Did everything get disassembled? Well, I think, I think the Gangstar Foundation, the foundation, um, the, the real foundation, because we have affiliates. Okay, could that you are name also, the foundations? The foundation is Group Home, okay. uh, J. Rue, okay. and Big Sure. Okay. Everybody else are affiliates of the Gangstar Foundation. Okay. So we have like, um, I guess honorary members of the Gangstar Foundation. I guess it's Crumb Snatcher. Crumb Snatcher, uh, he's affiliate. Uh, Bumpy Knuckles, who stands on his own, is an affiliate of the Gangstar Foundation because we all, at one time, rep uh, that movement. We're going to go Gangstar. into a commercial real quick. Sorry for cutting your wisdom sure. off. Timbo King Live, Fat Gary, Gangstar. You already know what it is. Stay in tune. Peace. The wife. As an American. As an American. As a human being. For the children of Sandy Hook. Demand a plan. No more lists of names. It's not too soon. It's too late. Now is the time. Before we all know someone who loved someone on that list. No more lists. No more. Who they might have been. No more. Demand it. Enough. 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 They said half a hit of E would be fun. They said half a hit of E would be fun. They lied. Find out the truth about drugs. Drugfreeworld.org. What's up, y'all? I'm Timbo King with a brand new TV show called Timbo King Live. Need you to go to YouTube, subscribe, and need you to check out the episodes. Leave comments. Timbo King Live. Stay in tune. And action. 
I believe in a breast cancer free world. While we're on this search for a cure, the hope is to eradicate this issue. It really has to start with the individual. We know our own bodies. Just take the time to pay attention to what it's telling you. I have an ability to affect the quality of my life, then I should. So take one small step. Go to mylifetime.com to get informed and involved. Join me with Lifetime to stop breast cancer for life. So the, uh, the death of Guru, it shocked everybody in the hip-hop culture. I mean, I know it has an effect to you because you and Guru was yeah, real tight. Yeah. So in your mind frame, did you know that Guru was sick? Nah, because... He never um, told nobody? No, nah, at this point, uh, Guru had moved on. And he was working. He had started his new Seven Grand Records. Okay. That was um, the, that's separate from the Ill Kids? That's separate from Ill Kids. Okay. Ill Kid was like the very beginning of... That was his offspring hip-hop thing from Gangstar. Mm -hmm. Then he had Jasmine Taz and brand new entity in, in, in the new millennium. He started Seven Grand with this other dude and partnered up with that guy and they started working so i didn't really get to, we didn't get to see i should say i didn't get to see um guru i don't think i've seen gurus at 2004 on so when he passed um how many had, albums guru put out as gangsta oh man i think i'm not sure i know they put out more six than or seven. seven six or seven about seven yeah yeah, yeah. About seven so um i know that um, when Guru passed, it was more of a shock yeah. because I got, you know, we got word. At first telephone. he was in the hospital for a minute, right? Right. But by the time we found out he was in the hospital, you know, he was already sick. He was already, you know, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time where there was no real day-to-day -day contact with Guru anymore. So, um... When he passed, you know, it was shocking. Yeah. You know. So the but, state of hip-hop right now, how do you feel in this current state of hip-hop right now? I love it. Nice. I love it. I, I, I really don't want to start the debate, but I usually do when I have this conversation. I don't knock nothing these kids are doing. Me either. You know what I mean? It's like, am I supposed to understand it? I, I mean, yeah, if you're in the know. Mm. But everybody else grow up, we get grown, we get our bills. We got responsibilities. We ain't partying, right? Yeah. We doing everything. So, you know, we don't want to necessarily see our kids live life. Mm. So I try my best to not tell these kids what they're supposed to do. I tell them stay out of trouble. That's the best stay, advice. Stay, st don't have no police contact. That's the best advice. You know advice. what I mean? Don't get caught up in social media. You know, when you get on social media, leave your feelings in the crib. Mm hmm don't play yourself and get caught up in back and forth. I see that all the time. It's like, we didn't have social media coming up. No. Thankfully. Yeah. You had to holler at you know I mean? Bebo down you know I mean? the block. Right. And, and it's Bebo like. Bebo relayed the message to. And if you had beef with John, somebody, John. if somebody came in and tried to rectify it, that's what it was. It wasn't you beefing on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter uh, and not being ready for the repercussions when they run up on you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, I love the state of hip-hop right now, you know. Is there any other groups that you manage? Oh, uh, I got a couple of groups, man. Uh, right now, to uh, this uh, day? Tribeca Grand. Okay. Uh, Philly, and I'll, see, I'll send you some music, some links to it. Nice. Uh, uh, the Vintage Babies. Vintage Babies. Uh, it's a young mm. lady, R&B rapper uh, with DJ producer, DJ Dummy, okay. who is the DJ for J. Cole and for uh, Common. Okay. Um, uh, uh, OC, the legendary OC. OC. You got a DIGC. new album out right now, right? New album out, that's right. Nice, that's right. shout out to OC. So, you know. Um, Bushwick representative. Yeah, so, um, you know, I got, you know I, got, I got a lot of things going on, and um, I love to put them in the pot with today's hip-hop. Nice. Because it gives everybody something different. You know, that's So you like a hip-hop historian? Not at all, not at all, not at I all. I mean, you got some facts about I mean, I got, I got a lot of that, but okay. not a historian, you okay. know what I mean? I'll leave that up to, man, I think Torre is more of a hip-hop historian now than I am. Okay. You know what I mean? I got stories Shout to tell. Shout out to Torre. I got stories to tell, but um, 
Harry Allen's a historian. Yes. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's like cats like that that knows a lot more than me. I got a lot of stories, but I'm a I'm more of a fan than anything. You know, just thinking about the concerts, the vintage concerts that happen today. Uh, I love to go, but I'm in awe the whole time, watching, looking for perfection and listening to these that's taking me back to my teenage years is what makes me appreciate what I do for a living. I mean, not everybody can say they don't have a day job and do this, you know, so I love it. For today's management, is it difficult to get artists or a group record deals now? Well, record deals. I mean, content deals or right. I the mean, new deals they got, the new agreements this. they have now. My thing is this. The way the game is played now, you got to have your social media numbers up. Okay. If you popping, you're going to get on. Okay, so you what's know? good numbers in social media, like as far as a Twitter page? I mean, they want... A hundred thousand fucking, you know, when, when you get when you get those type of numbers, mm -hmm. you're in the game, you know, because now you have certain artists who's the benchmark, mm. and I look at like a new artist. Like for instance, give an example. Cardi B. Cardi B. Shout going out to Cardi gold, B. Going gold in 24 hours. It's unheard of. Unheard of. You know, I mean, it used to take 30 days before the LP went gold. You know what I mean? So that's the difference okay. of the access. So It's and, a faster process for you to sell records now, basically I what believe you're saying? so. Yes. You know what I mean? Streaming, playlists, there's so many different ways of getting it. But at the same time, if you're only a mediocre artist, you're only going to get mediocre numbers. Mm. You know, so you got a lot of cats that's one hit. Take off, boom, and then can't catch another one. It's hard to make a hit. So record. a new artist basically don't have a catalog. You have to build it, like anything. You know what I mean? But when you say a one-hit wonder, how a could one, you build? A one, a one-hit wonder can build a million followers. True. They don't disappear. True. Once your Twitter's up, your IG's up, they don't unfollow you because you're not popular anymore. You don't have a hit record. True. You only need to gain them. True. You know, the same way that back in the day they was buying billboard spots, they're buying followers, you know? So you think that's legit I mean, or it's just business? It's business. Business is numbers. So when you see you know? a new artist with Instagram followers, they have 300K followers. And when you look at one of their posts, it has 1,500 likes from 300K followers. Is that good arithmetic? I mean, we could use that for one post. Okay. You know what I mean? But you can look at the consistency okay. and see what's real and what's fake. Okay. You know, but see, a, a lot of times with social media, you got the common folk looking at it. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that's handling the business knows what it really is. That's the only difference. You know, so we could sit here all day and talk about, I got, I got 300,000 followers. But when you drop a single or you post a video and it don't go nowhere, you better ask yourself, why your followers are not following you? Mm. Because it's hitting at least 300,000 people. Mm. At one and time, one second. At one time, it's hitting them. And nobody's clicking the like button. Mm. Since you can get more, you know, a regular Joe can get that many, well, get a 1,500 likes on their birthday. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like you just have to... Like I said, but when it's the music business, you can't take it away and be socially. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people get it misconstrued. Mm -hmm. A hot record's a hot record. Nice. You know what I mean? A lot of people make mediocre records, mediocre videos. Some go viral, some don't. You know, the ones that catch fire, it's like how they used to do back in the day. They take all the groups, throw them against the wall. Whatever stick is what we chase. Mm -hmm. You know? So a lot of times when you look at things with artists, you have to ask yourself, who am I going to put all my energy behind? Mm. You know, a lot of artists can get out there and be great on YouTube. So what you have to say to a new artist coming up or a new producer coming in the game, what advice you have for, for them? I just tell As them to stay with it. Stay, stay with, with it. it. 
you know, don't have many expectations. Just know what you want. A lot of us get lost between the forest and the trees because we're looking at the next person. You got to run your own race. You is it an age limit with you when it comes to an artist or a producer? Yeah, a lot of times it is. It is? Yeah. And okay. only because I look at the older guys. A 40-year-old rapper is not going to be talking about the same what stuff these kids as are talking year about. Old. Right. Yeah, they're you know going mean? through different realms. So I'm like, yo, you know, at 40 years old, are you telling people to smoke weed? You know what I mean? Are you sitting there telling them to get high? That is true. Are you going to be geeked and fired up at 40-something years old? But an 18-year-old is saying, you know, do lean. Let's do my lean. Exactly. But they experimenting. Yeah. Like we did when we were their age. Exactly. You know? My moms and pops didn't know I was out trying a cigarette or trying weed or drinking old, uh, 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 old gold. But they'd have my head if they knew that. You know, but that's what I had to do. So now I can't, I can't fault these young kids doing that. I wish they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to do it. It's just an experience they it's have just to go experience. through. Life is the greatest you know I mean? teacher. It's like we all lost our, uh, our virginity and none of our parents sat there and made it happen for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So all your contacts is on social media right now? All your social Instagram, media, Facebook, Facebook, Gary, P H A T G A R Y mm -hmm. at Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. It's all the same. Yo, thanks for coming to the Timbo King Live show, oh, man. Oh, man, I love I it, man. I'm going to stick around and see what else you got coming to. Oh, no doubt, man. You don't really know what it is. Fat Gary, Gangstar Foundation, yes, man. Sir. It's an yes, honor, sir. man. Oh, man. Yo, My Timbo pleasure. King Live. I'm your host, Timbo King. Stay in tune. Fat Gary, Gangstar Foundation. One love. Peace. Yeah. yeah. It's the life that we choose to live, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I bet you love me now. <laughs> Do you love me now? Yeah. And does you love me then? So, so. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah. Do you love me now? 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 Do Approach my enemies with precaution. Premeditate my moves and then I toss them. These streets is deep, but it gets deeper. I done prayed with the angels. I done played with the Grim Reaper. Experience both sides to get the feel for it. Learn money, bring more drama, people are kill for it. So I lay low, keep grass cut for them snakes. My niggas will blow out your candle and take all the cake. Real rap, y'all rappers are not real. My flow's authentic, yes, selling souls for deals. Where I'm from, they say death before the sauna. Try to keep a cool, our blocks hotter than the sauna. I respond like you still the same with time come growth. My mind is on the better things. My next move is my best move. Got the game from the vet, so this world gon' make a chess move. Big bank bosses, the family, and the business. They can't stand me, but damn it, they gonna dig this. My franchise gon' expand in a minute. We was dripping pies, getting bands by the minute. Came from zero to using machines for the paper. That De Niro gon' help us pull our machines on them haters. Yeah. Wow.
was the damn mission. We grinding heavily, striving for longevity. The Fetty, we done ran to some dudes and never seen.